Every student should have a high quality educational experience, while every person dreaming of higher education should have a right to enter a university. Tuning India brings together 15 Indian universities, along with five EU partners, to try and make this dream come true. Indian higher education strives for the need of all the students across the national and international institutions that permit students to do develop transferable skills, accessible worldwide education for designing accessible worldwide education for all. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and welcome to the hard science section of the Capacity Building Higher Education Virtual Fair 2021. My name is Ortion Pengo from the National Erasmus uh, Plus office in Albania, and I'll be moderating this event. Miss mm -hmm. Olga Glika uh, from the National Erasmus office uh, from Moldova will assist me in this task. Uh, before we start, uh, I would like to remind our audience that this event, as well as all other thematic sessions uh, held today, are being broadcasted live through the virtual uh, fair accounts in Facebook and YouTube. In this regard, we encourage our viewers to follow the program uh, of the virtual fair and attend as many sessions as they can uh, to enjoy uh, the insight and unique experiences crafted by the own people that made the achievement of such project possible. Uh, moreover, I want to thank the rep representatives for our three capacity building projects, uh, ITAM, NETCAM and STEAM, and ESTEAM, that through their contribution made this session possible. We hope that through their, su their success story, uh, you can draw the necessary inspiration for new in initiative and actions within the opportunities provided by the Erasmus Plus program. Uh, the program of this session uh, will comprise three presentations centered on, on the results of projects and the final 15-minute sessions of questions and answers with the speakers. Uh, to all our attendees, uh, we encourage your engagement and kindly ask you to submit your questions uh, in the respective Q&A tab that you can find in the right corner of your screen. Uh, by initially stating the name of the project, uh, 
uh, which need to be addressed and then uh, stating your question. You can also upvote the question that you feel most relevant. Another functionality available is the CC button, which allows, which at the center of the screen, which allows you to put captions when hearing the, the presentation. Uh, now, without further ado, I'd like to invite Mr. Uh, Javelon Karimov, uh, Mr. Nisam Harel, and Mr. Faton Merovici for the presentation of the innovative teaching and education in mathematic projects. Gentlemen, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Nisim Harel uh, from the Holon Institute of Technology, and together with my colleagues, uh, Faton Merovci and, uh, from Kosovo and uh, Evlon Karimov from Uzbekistan, we will talk uh, about uh, some of the impacts of the item project. Uh, the project was conceived to tackle the problem many educators feel vis-a-vis -vis the teaching of mathematics in higher education institutions. Many first-year students experience math as a hard subject that is irrelevant to their professional success. They underappreciate the importance and the role mathematics plays in solving real-life problems and applications. They are constantly being told that math is an important subject, that it is crucial to their professional success, but they don't really understand why this is true and how this very difficult subject is uh, connected to reality. Low motivation to study a demanding subject, accompanied with lack of confidence, learning skills, and prior knowledge, lead to the inevitable result. Many students do not properly understand what they learn, and as a result, do not recall and cannot apply math knowledge in the second and third year of their studies, as well as uh, in their professional careers. Not surprisingly, math courses are also blamed for being a leading cause for students' failure to meet the requirements of first-year academic studies and ultimately to graduate. A higher education institutions, on the other hand, lack the facilities and infrastructure to deal with unengaged students. In many countries, they also uh, uh, strive for resources. We think that uh, poor achievements in mathematics and the fear from, uh, uh, from the subject are mainly the result of the way mathematics is being taught in high schools and in higher education institutions. And uh, this unhappy reality led us researchers and teachers from 16 institutions in 10 different countries to form the Innovating Teaching Education in Mathematics or the ITEM uh, Consortium. Uh, seven institutions from seven, it includes seven institutions from seven different program countries, uh, three institutions from Kosovo, three institutions uh, from Uzbekistan, and uh, uh, three institutions from Israel. Uh, our goal is to demonstrate to the students that mathematics is relevant to the program they have chosen to study, and that they can learn mathematics and succeed in learning this subject. We understand that there is no silver bullet or a single simple fix to the problem we described. Rather, we propose to adopt a confluence of teaching and learning activity techniques. The first one is demonstrating relevance to the subject matter using real-life problems at the, uh, uh, as the motivation for the study. The second one is develop a uh, student's learning abilities. The third one is immediate feedback. The fourth is support for students who fall behind. We will now elaborate on these techniques, starting with uh, connecting mathematics uh, to real-life applications. Uh, here is an example uh, to the way we present the subject of piecewise functions. And I'm sure some of the audience see this slide and immediately disengage. But really, we can view this as asking how we can design surfaces that connect with each other, much like a roller coaster or a surface of a car. As you can imagine, and I can attest uh, to what happens to the students I teach in Israel, Students are enthusiastic about this approach. They participate, they ask questions, and suggest new approaches. They leave the lecture with the feeling that there is something tangible that they can do with what they just have learned. Even when students are enthusiastic, they must have appropriate learning skills that will help them uh, better understand and better learn math. One of the problems they face is how to study and what to do when they are stuck. Um, 
so in the first meeting, whenever they, the first lecture, we explained the difference between studying math in high school and in higher education institution, and we provi provide students with methods to gradually learn the material. We demonstrate to them the use of learning in pairs by asking them to do this in class. We introduce many visualizations to help them understand the material. Uh, we give them suggestions on what to do when they are stuck and provide them with concise material if they need help with prerequisite uh, uh, material. As you can see, uh, when changes are performed by the teaching staff, they work pretty well and they help the students. Uh, in Israel, at least, uh, we have less success motivating students for proactive action. I would like to stress that the situation is better than before, but the improvement is not as apparent as when the responsibility lies solely in the hands of the teaching staff. Another aspect is to give students feedback so that they will know as soon as possible what is their true level so that they uh, have time to adjust and act accordingly. Uh, we implemented the uh, frequent testing in, uh, in, in class during, uh, recite, uh, during recitation, uh, in class work during recitation, and provided preparatory work before lectures. From our experience, these measures help students uh, who are somewhat engaged, but not students who are not engaged. To help students uh, who are not engaged, we first need to uh, identify them, and we are implementing an early identification system to find and locate students who are uh, at risk to fail. Uh, currently, we are optimizing our early identification algorithm, uh, and uh, we will implement it uh, in this year. Uh, we will now uh, describe the impact of the project, uh, of the item project in Kosovo. Hello, I am Fatome Rufsi from Kosovo. Impact of project item in Kosovo, I will express at University of Mitrovica, but it has almost the same impact in two other institutions of higher education in Kosovo that are part of the project as University of Pristina and Universum College. Impact at University of Mitrovica is divided into three parts as impact to professor of mathematics, impact to students and impact at university. Professor of mathematics for the first time have started to use software with a license like Mathematica, where a lot of visualizations are prepared by this software and a lot of materials for the solution of exercises has been realized through this software. Other impact is that we have started to use Moodle where through it, we prepare more frequent exams and through weekly exams, where at the end of lectures, we can see immediately at what point we need improvement. Whereas from various trainings we have benefited, I would mention such as training on teaching methods such as PBL and POPBL, where mathematics teachers with an item have attended training at the University of Aalborg in Denmark. We also have attended training on using Mathematica software. At the end of semester, we organized a questionnaire about linear algebra and calculus, where students noted the difficulties in each chapter and many other elements that before we had organized questionnaire to measure quality, but they were very general. However, now with the item project, we started to get feedback from our students about the necessary change to teaching exams preparation of materials, etc. Now students at the University of Mitrovica for the subjects linear algebra and calculus have all materials about visualizations prepared through Mathematica software. They have installed the software where each student has license of using of this software. They have attended various training such as how to learn mathematics, have to use the Mathematica software. Now they have all lectures, application of each chapter of mathematics in real life. They have attended to Mathematics Meets Industry at the fourth Metro Mountain Day at Karlstadt University. And what is the most important since the start of item project, the average of passing exam is increased. In addition of impact on teaching methods and application of more exams, item project 
has had a direct impact on the institution itself because during accreditation of computer science program in 2021, where it was required to design syllabi, e.g. from four mathematics subjects that are in computer science, where one of them is elective subject and three others are mandatory, not only we did receive no remark on syllabi of mandatory subject, but I am mentioning what the accreditation expert wrote about the selective, about the elective subject. Excellent program. If it can be so well performed as described, it will be a pity not to make it obligatory. Understanding of statistics is currently in high demand and widely applicable from quality control to artificial intelligence, big data, and further. Now my colleague Yavdan will continue. Okay, thank you, uh, Nisim and Faton. Uh, I am Javlan Karimov from National University of Uzbekistan. Uh, I both speakers talked about main aim and purpose of the project. Now I want to speak about impact of the project to Uzbekistan University, particularly National University of Uzbekistan, Tashkent Institute of Information Technologies and Karshi Engineering Institute and reach the results during the project. So first of all, about main activities of the project. So there was modified curriculum in linear algebra one and calculus one and reach it with real life problems. Uh, provided trainings to study Wolfram Mathematics in May, July uh, 2020, organized by Wolfram. And uh, visualizations began uh, to be developed using mathematical software. Uh, and these simulations should visualize the basic concepts of linear algebra one and the calculus one courses. And mathematics from each university took part in the first item PBL and POBL uh, training at Albert University of Denmark. And teaching methods were developed based on these applications of PBL and POBL principles. And also Moodle platform for first year students of mathematical faculty was developed with help of our partner university from North Macedonia. And the paper on the topic organization of activities with unsuccessful and poorly performing students of National University of Uzbekistan was prepared for publication. So here is the interface of new Moodle platform of the faculty. And you can see here uh, photos from trainings. And one of the most important impact of the project is modifying courses uh, with real life problems in mathematics. So within the project uh, on December 2020 was organized Mathematics Meets Industry Day at Karlstadt University and companies propose scientific challenges. Teams of mathematicians consisting of senior researcher, doctoral and university students uh, work together to come up with the solution uh, strategies to the pro, uh, pro proposed problem. And the Uzbekistan team uh, was uh, participated for the first time in such global competition. And our target problem was the MRI resource optimization problem. And we hope that we successfully solved targeted problem and gave our vision to problem owner company. And this competition was an important and useful experience for working and studying with real life problems in mathematics. <clears throat> and one of the main purposes of the project, it is ill identifying students who fall behind. And end of the each semester, we start conduct questionnaire uh, among the students to define their problem during uh, studying courses. And after questionnaire, we investigate their problems and try to find solutions. And we generate following 10 rules for working with students who fall behind. And also we give our solutions two problems uh, with students who fall behind using the examples of Faculty of Mathematics of the National University of Uzbekistan. The first one, it is organizing of a special groups uh, for students uh, who get a hit with their subsequent rotation. It gives them uh, more motiva motivation. And second one, it is identification of students, ill identification of students who fall behind. The ways of identifications are seminars, checking homework, surveys, tests, and so on. And uh, also connect one student who will be behind to student get a hit and control their teamwork. Do some small groups and from students who will be behind and appoint to them one leader 
students who get a hit and work together as competition. And third one it is a system where takes skipping classes has been developed. And fourth one is great attention to self-study work. And of course, number five, it is video tutorials. Thank you for attention. Well, thank you for the contribution. I think that uh, it was really an interesting presentation and I'm sure the participants uh, will like to follow up on the insight and issue that you tackled in the question and answer section. Um, now I give the floor to the second presentation to Ms. Tatiana uh, Andielovic and uh, Mr. Milan uh, Antonievic for presenting the ICT networking for overcoming teaching and social barriers in instrumental analytical uh, chemistry education, uh, NETCAM. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Aldian. Um, so, first of all, um, I have to, to present myself also and my colleague, uh, Dr. Milan Antonievic. My name is Tatiana Djelkovic and I'm coming from Serbia. Uh, I'm a professor at university in a niche and I was coordinator of NETCAM project. And my colleague, Dr. Milan Antonievic, uh, coming from United Kingdom, who is a professor at uh, University of Greenwich and uh, is also an institutional coordinator for uh, University of Greenwich. So uh, you see the title of the project, and uh, although in the title only chemistry is mentioned, uh, the scope of the whole project is much wider, covering also students and researchers in physics and biology, so in natural sciences. The NETKIM project uh, deals with curriculum development in Western Balkan region, actually in Serbia and Albania. With this project, we have supported modernization and internationalization of Serbian and Albanian universities and contributed to the cooperation between the European Union and Western Balkan. We improved the quality of higher education and its relevance for the labor market and society, and increased the level of competencies and skills in universities by developing those new and innovative education programs. So we modernized curriculums in the field of mainly environmental protection and food safety control at six Western Balkan universities. Next slide, Milan. Uh, so the core goal was the creation of NETKIM platform. This platform provides three main services. The first uh, one and the most important is network of remote instrumental analytical laboratories. The second one uh, are open educational resources. And finally, we created a database for collection of all environmental data that we collected. Uh, so uh, we have started with this project in 2016 and finalized it in April 2020. So we had uh, three and a half years to develop the courses and educational material, and also to develop the NETCAM platform, then to deliver courses to students, professionals, researchers, and finally to get feedback that help us to evaluate the strength of our results, but also to see where are the opportunities to increase the quality level of all results. At the beginning of project, in order to choose the most appropriate laboratory and IT equipment and software that will correspond to the lack in technical capacities and skills of each university separately, we have organized the survey and collected answers from more than 400 teachers, students, researchers, professionals in industries and instrument suppliers. This feedback showed us actually in which direction to go. So what IT and laboratory equipment to buy. And thanks to European Union, it was a huge impact on Western Balkan technical resources because more than 257,000 of euros were implemented for IT and laboratory equipment in six established IT classrooms 
NetCam IT classrooms in Novi Sad, Kragujevac, Belgrade, Niš and Tirana. During a lifetime of project, we have modernized 56 courses in basic master and PhD level. We created 60 e-learning modules, more than 30 tutorials, more than 100 educational videos. We have also created a platform for remote access to over 32 analytical instruments. Created a database of environmental data that is totally freely available, not only to consortium, but also to the general public. In two academic years, from October 2018 till now, more than 1,300 students and professionals were enrolled in the courses. Okay, and I will now step in uh, just to let you know that not only um, universities and higher education institutions from Serbia and Albania benefited from this project, but also EU partners who uh, actually engaged in the development of the Remote Access Laboratory Network. And just for those who are not really familiar what the Remote Access Laboratory Network is, uh, just to give you a brief uh, uh, kind of information. For example, you have an instrument that you desire to work work on, but unfortunately your institution doesn't have that instrument. So you will there pairing up with another institution that is in possession of the instrument via the network, somebody at that institution places your sample in, and then you can operate the instrument, analyze data, and fully understand uh, your uh, outcomes of your research. So this is all about the remote access, and this is widely done actually in uh, pharmaceutical industry and many other industries. So although the initial motivation for the remote access network was, as I said, you know, uh, to actually teach modern analytical techniques to students in higher education institutions, which do not necessarily have uh, the state of the art instrumentation. Uh, we are now really aware that during the corona, access to laboratories was really limited. Therefore, uh, this type of, of teaching uh, uh, was adopted across the globe. And I must say that University of Greenwich uh, is now building on the success from the experience with this uh, NetCam project. And we continue to develop our blended learning using remote access as a tool uh, in lab classes. And just last year, I think that we saved around uh, 490 lab hours by engaging our students free uh, remote access uh, uh, teaching. Okay, so another important uh, thing about the project is that not only uh, students uh, uh, were engaged, uh, uh, also we engaged researchers and scientists heavily in uh, kind of delivering research-led aspects of teaching. With this said, uh, we have organized international meeting at University Niche uh, in Serbia. The researchers presented and discussed their uh, latest achievements in the field of environmental protection. And uh, uh, in total, we had uh, 22 brilliant lectures, six uh, virtual laboratory sessions uh, were performed uh, for over 80 participants from uh, the Western Balkan and uh, EU partners. And I must say that all participants in this meeting were able to actually experience working on a remote instruments that were located at that time, Greenwich, Brno and Novi Sad. And of course, uh, often, uh, projects lead to something that you didn't plan in the first place. And uh, here is one example whereby uh, in order to establish and develop uh, continuous professional development courses or CPDs, uh, we needed to have a body that can actually approve their existence and in other words, actually accredit them. So uh, in order to fulfill the needs uh, for the accreditation purposes, the NetCamp project actually initiated creation of the Center for Professional Development at the University in Niche. This center was then created and used to promote the lifelong learning education and is an example of what we call the positive spin-off effect created beyond the specific objectives of uh, the project. And of course, it's extremely important to say that uh, uh, social cohesion was um, extremely important in the project in order to intensify the cooperation between Serbian and Albanian universities and European universities and enterprises. We had a lot of mobilities between 
uh, uh, Serbian teachers to Albania and actually Albanian teachers coming to Serbia. 24 mobilities uh, were completed throughout the project, uh, uh, which involved actually 460 people from partner institutions. Uh, looking in total, the project involved a huge number of staff. More than 140 people were actively involved in the delivery of the project outcomes. And it's extremely important to state that the great help of, of EU partners uh, on the NetCam team and transfer of their knowledge and experience was highly effective. EU partners were involved in the knowledge transfer that included not only pedagogical and scientific uh, expertise uh, shift from EU to Balkan countries, namely Serbia and Albania, uh, but also to awake the collaboration on the development of successful project outcomes, which one of them is uh, what I already explained, remote access network. And when we talk about success, I must often you know, quote the Oscar Wilde who said, success is science. If you have conditions, you get the results. And therefore, in my view, the NetCamp project is an example of such success whereby proper project aims, carefully selected project partners, recognized and supported by the EU funding, led to the development of the valuable project outcomes. Yes, thank you, Milan. And the, the final slide uh, regarding sustainability. Uh, this is important issue, and uh, I have to say that the, the guarantee of sustainability of the project is provided uh, formally by signed agreement on educational, scientific, and technical cooperation between consortium institutions. But uh, uh, what is important is that beside the significance of this document, the real guarantee for sustainability of a uh, project is actually usefulness and quality of achieved outcomes. Because this, real, this uh, gives the real motivation for future collaboration and exploitation of the project after its completion. And we believe that we succeeded in that. And uh, finally, I would just like uh, at the end to mention that the whole uh, NETKIM team, uh, so in France, Sorbonne University, in uh, United Kingdom, University of Greenwich, Czech Republic, Brno University of Technology, in France also uh, Alternative Energies and Atomic Energy Commission and NGO Aqualir, and in Serbia, universities of Niš, Belgrade, Novi Sad, Kragujevac, uh, in uh, University of Tirana, it is a mistake on slide, <laughs> in Albania, University of Tirana and Agricultural University of Tirana, and also in Serbia, three enterprises, analysis and a logical station in Vršac and Zlatiborac. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much for the NetCamp team. Uh, before we go to the final, uh, third and final presentation, once again, I'd like to uh, invite, encourage all the attendees to, you know, put forward the question, the comment, the comments for for our speakers. You know, to to draw as much as they can from their from their successful experience. That's why we are we are having this uh, this this session. Uh, so um, now I'll give the floor to uh, Ms. Sirlak uh, bangchok uh, and uh, her colleague uh, Tanate Pan Panrat for the final uh, presentation of the uh, Era, uh, Asia Collaboration for Enhancing uh, STEAM Education, uh, ESTEAM. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. I'm Siri Lok, and my colleague is Dr. Tanet. And he's sick today. He's not able to make a presentation, but we have a video presentation so we can show you all about the EA STEM. Good afternoon, everyone. EA STEM, Euro Asia Collaboration for Enhancing STEM Education. Presenters today are Dr. Tanet Banrat and myself, Siri Lak Bang Chokdi from Prince of Songkhwa University, Thailand. Concept of EA STEM 
ES STEM is an Erasmus Plus capacity building project running from 2019 to 2022 and is formed by a consortium of three universities from Europe, three from Vietnam, three from Thailand and four from Indonesia. The project aims to ensure that STEM education provides students with competencies relevant to labor markets, thus improving their employability. By exchanging best practices among European and Asian universities, each partner university can find inspiration to enhance STEM education at their institution. ES STEM Consortium includes universities from Europe, Vietnam, Thailand, and Indonesia. Uppsala University, Sweden is our coordinator. There are three main work packages. Work package two is focused on the development of train the trainers courses for university lecturers in order to give them the tools to use student-centered learning approach in their teaching. Work Package 3 helps to sustain the project by setting up STEM centers at partner universities. Work Package 4 professional competencies and input from industry partners are integrated in curricular study programs and university strategies. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Assistant Professor Dr. Tanit Banrat, an Assistant to President for Learning Innovation Development, Prince of Songkran University's representative. And thank you for kindly giving me the opportunity to present the progress and activities of PHU ESTEM Work Package 2. According to PHU Education Transformation Policies, we have to change the old teacher to be a professional teacher for the 21st century education by changing the environment and applying STEM education combined with the SDGs concept. One key of the considerations for PHU transformations, we would be ensuring that the students have access and the right tools and skill to cope with the increased use of the technologies combined with the new learning environments by using STEM based. Moreover, PHU also considering the alternative of no physical class to online class virtual space or online learning environment is has been an important tool to sustain skill development of teacher and student and adequate preparations among teacher and student for unique demand that online teaching learning space from STEM theory to PSU TOT course to 2021 and teacher development, PSU also provide resources for training of staff. First, the creative media and innovation for online teaching and learning connected with the STEM education. And the second is the design learning management where STEM education connect with the industries and assessment. This is an example of activity of the PSU TOG training course for higher education teachers at the PSU. We also apply the STEM education connect with the PBL and activity to encourage all the lecturer to provide activities or creative activity for the students. PSU also work hard on STEMs. From the higher education, we move to the STEM lab in the schools or the faculty. With this activity, we also have the partners in the demonstration school of Prince of Songkran University, Patani Campus. Islamic Science Demonstration School in Upsom Klan University, Bethany Campus. We also have two big faculty in the PSU Bethany Campus. First, Faculty of Education, and second is the Faculties of Science and Technologies that 
located in PSU Patani campus is also important and play the important role for support the communities. Moreover, PSU TOT co training is not only the uh, higher education teachers, we also provide a secondary school teacher by using STEM education connect with the program of PBL and based on activity to enhance the high school teacher to provide the learning environment at school or the communities. This is a the activity that transform from the knowledge of STEM in, in higher education and secondary school to the community to apply in the real world situations and the current situation in the, uh, the area nearby the PSU campuses. Not only the campus, PSU STEM also provide the connections, collaborations, and integrates all the STEM education approach over the Internet of Things or IOTs with the partner from inside and outside countries. So it is the activity is show us we can have the potential to apply other knowledge, both teachers, students to work together over the internet. Moreover, peers will not only focus on how to support teacher for teaching and learning. We also set up the guideline to support a teacher for the classroom research that can help the limit cross over the student and teacher to work together, such as the creative STEM learning activity for enhancing reasoning skill for the next generation of innovative thinker, or professional learning communities on STEM competency based on COVID-19 pandemic issues and also STEM PBL activity for higher education to enhance the STEM competencies. At the university and school around the world that got effect from COVID-19, Thailand ESTEM team, Chiang Mai University, Mahidon University, and Prince of Sun Khan University. We also think on how to adapt the activities and how to help the teacher from first to first classroom. We ran the webinar series for making the alternative activities based on no physical classroom to online classroom. That is an essential tool to support and sustain skill development of the students. To summarize the outputs of PSU STEM activities, we found that first, knowledge and skill can be developed through training and skill building exercise. Second is the behavior competence are rather difficult to exit and development, such as self concept, trials, and motives. Two conclusions about PHU STEM activities. We found that the employability and success in STEM related to the job. First, the strong fundamentals and technical knowledge came from trainings. The skill came from practical experience and also the essential skill is come from interpersonal skill. This is the conclusion and the progress of the PSU STEM Center and PSU STEM team. Thank you. World Package 3 STEM Center at PSU. We establish His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa PSU STEM Center. This is the structure of PSU STEM Center. PSU STEM Center is under Education and Innovative Learning Academy, which is also under the President Office. There are four missions of PSU STEM Center. First, training of the trainer for academic staff in PSU. Second, facilitate and support STEM education activities at PSU. Training and mentoring school teacher in STEM activities. And the last one, Ling University and industrial partner. We hosted and sponsored 
national and international conference. For example, in 2019, we have joint international education conference. This conference is between PSU and the university network in Malaysia. In 2021, we hosted the 9th PSU Education Conference, a better change in higher education for future economy. We are going to host the second system international conference in November 2021 in partnership with EA STEM and IMTGT Uninet, which includes 27 universities in Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand. We have many keynote speakers. Professor Valentina from Vinius University, our EA STEM partner, will be our keynote speaker. We also have support staff training programs such as management skills, team working. Work package for industry collaboration. PSU focuses on work integrated learning. There are four areas. Curriculum design. We launched uh, the university policy that all curriculum at PSU need to be designed based on OBE or outcome-based education. Second, cooperative study. Third, co-design and co-teaching subject between university and the industry. And the last one, learning from the industry. According to outcome-based education, stakeholder needs are important input for developing program learning outcomes. So program coordinators need to get information from the industry. We have many methods like survey, interview, and focus group. For cooperative study, we have three key activities. First, training students. Second, training our teacher. And the last one, extending our collaboration with the industry. We started having co-design and co-teaching subject early this year. A collaboration between PSU and CPF, the top company in Thailand. This one is a multidisciplinary subject, which includes uh, agriculture, food processing, engineer, and business. We work together with the industry in designing course learning outcome, teaching method, teaching plan, as well as evaluation. Co-teaching and co-coaching activities. We learn from the industry. We have keynote speaker from the industry to share uh, what are important skills for graduate and how university can develop such skills. We publish proceeding paper uh, in a collaborations among ESM partners, including IMT Atlantic France, CMU, and PSU Thailand. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Already finished. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, now that uh, we have finished with all three presentations, I think that we can uh, start by addressing uh, the question from the uh, attendees. Uh, the one that they have uh, directly expressed, but they can feel free, you know, to, 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 to ask again or to to uh, point out any issue, anything that they may need uh, for the clarification. Um, so regarding the question and answer, I think that uh, there, uh, there may be a question uh, directed to the uh, NetCam, NetCam uh, project. Uh, for Ms. Tatiana, is this is NetCam platform available for students and faculty from other parts of the world also? Yes, it is. I already answered. So I gave a link uh, and it is uh, opened. So there is a procedure how to contact a host, uh, etc. But everything is explained on the uh, remote access platform. Okay, thank you. There is also another question. Uh, I think uh, it's added to the ITM project. Uh, how the PBL, PO, PO, uh, BL are dealt in the ITM project? Also, what major parameter in your algorithm predicts student failure? 
if I could get some idea, I uh, would love to work on these ideas. Um, for, first of all, uh, this is Nisi Marel from Holon Institute of Technology. Um, uh, first of all, uh, we we have a problem implementing PBL and POPBL uh, uh, in, into a math uh, curriculum at first year because we have to um, uh, we have to, we have a lot of material to cover. And when we have a lot of material to cover and there is uh, very little time, uh, we cannot uh, uh, do a flip course or flip, flip class and giving them project because we won't be able to give them all of the material. So what we do is we give them uh, small projects to work on. Uh, for example, uh, when we teach them about vectors, we ask them uh, how does the computer know if uh, a point a click uh, when a, when a, when a person clicks on a on, on a triangle or uh, some kind of an object, whether uh, it is inside or outside the uh, uh, the object. So this is a real life problem. It, uh, in computer science, it makes sense, and it. Uh, and in order to solve it, they need to apply knowledge from the uh, uh, from what they have learned in uh, uh, analytical uh, uh, geometry. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, regarding uh, parameters for um, uh, for finding uh, students who are unengaged, uh, students who are unengaged, it's very simple to find out because uh, first of all, students leave a lot of trails. Uh, in the um, in, in the platforms such as Moodle, uh, and if they are not engaged, we won't be able to see them at all. There, they are not logging in and they are not doing anything. Uh, the more interesting thing is to find students who are engaged at the beginning and then lose interest. And this is something where you can look at uh, at patterns such as a lot of engagement and then a gradually decreasing engagement throughout the semester. And again, you can find it in the first uh, several weeks of the semester. Uh, so I, I hope I answered the question. Uh, any other question? Um, Okay, I may have a question uh, as, uh, at this moment regarding the item project, which is a, a non-technical question I may ask. Uh, regarding the approach developed, you know, for uh, identifying students with, that are fall behind and, uh, and uh, addressing a solution for, for, for targeting them. Um, how was this approach um, uh, Let's say uh, taken taken uh, by the other the other disciplines, you know, in the in the faculties that they work. Uh, do, did you uh, need to do uh, to have some uh, kind of uh, uh, buy buy into them, or how um, let's say how how was the general feeling, you know, from from uh, disciplines, you know, that probably they are not so much familiar to 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 uh, hard sciences. Uh, I mean, uh, most of the places we teach, uh, we're teaching in the, I mean, the, the, pro the item project is for uh, students in, uh, um, in electrical engineering or in computer science. This is the, uh, uh, this is where we did the, uh, uh, the teaching. Uh, I personally am teaching in one faculty that is um, a faculty for a medical uh, a, a technology, technology in med, techno, technology in medicine. So, but in any case, we're teaching. We're not teaching in the, in art departments. So, so there is a lot of buying for what we are doing, and uh, um, um, uh, it's because it's 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 relatively the same subject. Whether whether other teachers look at what we did and try to em, em, emulate it and imitate it um, uh, not so much in Israel, but this is because we work in isolation. Every, every subject is, 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 uh, is on its own. Uh, uh, but there is a, a, a buy-in among other 
uh, colleagues in math, uh, in math departments or people who are teaching math in other institutions. Thank you. Um, a final question for, for, for myself regarding the three pro problems, the three projects. What was the major challenges that you uh, found along the way in implementing these projects and how, how did you manage to overcome them? Who will start? <laughs> it's a free discussion, so. <laughs> um, uh, we had we had in, in, in the item project we had a, a, a problem of uh, not having the same curriculum. I mean, even even in in a single country, um, the, the curriculum of different institutions is 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 not the same. Um, uh, we had uh, um, so what we developed is we developed uh, um, a standard curriculum that was uh, the uh, the common denominator uh, of all the curriculums. Uh, we had uh, a, a problem of uh, um, um, a different approaches uh, to to teach math. So we discussed it uh, amongst ourselves, and and again there is different cultures of of doing things in different countries. Uh, so uh, uh, we uh, end up having a lot of um, uh, uh, a lot of um, uh, independence for each one of the institutions to do things uh, the way they see fit to their own uh, uh, culture uh, uh, and, and environment. Uh, on the other hand, we we uh, manage to to take all of the materials we created so that we will be able to share it amongst ourselves. Okay, I can go if, if there are no other brave people around. Uh, and we'll just, you know, uh, uh, coming from Balkans and, you know, getting my education there and now being, you know, part of a UK system uh, uh, taught me and, and brought me back, you know, when I was working with my colleagues uh, and uh, demonstrated how rigid sometimes, you know, educational systems could be. And that was the biggest challenge, actually trying to modernize something, trying to say, yes, you can do things in a slightly different way was, was a, a kind of, you know, interesting challenge. And of course, as you all know, uh, we couldn't persuade, you know, Serbians and Albanians to, sorry, you know, I'm wearing masks, you know, because I have meetings with students, but, you know, uh, uh, we cannot persuade, you know, Serbians and Albanians, you know, to change, you know, their way of operation uh, completely. But the good outcome was that they were thinking about different ways of operating and made in my opinion significant changes so whenever you work with you know different institutional or, or educational systems you know that is the challenge you're gonna always probably face that's me okay I would like to share about EA STEM I think um, I have similar um, challenge like <laughs> from other projects we are from many countries and different countries have different systems in their education. So like even though we are from um, Asian university, Asian partner like Vietnam, Indonesia and Thailand, we still have different system about STEM. Some country uh, in Thailand, STEM is driven by like government policy, but for other country, maybe not. So the so when we want to uh, implement something or we want to develop like the model of best practice. So we have to consider that uh, the implementation that how can we, you know, meet in the middle that we, we can do it, all of us can do it. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, I believe uh, we have tackled uh, as many issues that we could uh, during this one uh, one hour session. Uh, I would like uh, 
to thank you all the all the speakers and all the participants for attending the day and for making this event possible. I also would like to remind you that uh, there are some uh, networking opportunities that the virtual fair has made available to every one of you. You have um, 60 available uh, networking discussion rooms there in the main in the main lobby. 40 is there. 40 of them are thematic rooms. Uh, dealing with uh, with topics like the hard sciences that we had today, but 20, 20 of them also private room that you can all get together, you know, and uh, discuss everything that uh, was left uh, untouched in this kind in this kind of discussion, and also to discuss opportunities for for new cooperation. You know, we have uh, the new calls now being uh, being expected to be launched in November, so so please take available of these opportunities. They are for you. So thank you. Thank you once again. All the best. Thank you. Thank you also. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Good evening.